Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we have a subscriber request and it's how to make some low poly snow. And that's what we're going to make. However, you can modify the techniques if you choose to and make regular snow if you like. Um, let's not waste any more time and jump right in. All right, let's start. So in my scene right now, I have a few props. I have a barrel, a fence, um, a sled, and some terrain. And I would like to make some snow to cover these objects. So I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna open up the outliner. You can see that all these objects are separated. To simplify it, I'm gonna make it one object. So I'm gonna box select everything and click this combine button. And I'm just gonna delete that history and rename this. So I'm gonna call this um, winter props. There we go. And then uh, to create our snow, we're going to create an emitter and um, instantiate some particles. So to do that, let's switch to the effects workflow. Up here on the upper left, we're in the modeling workflow right now. I'm gonna change it to effects, which gives me access to the end particles. So open up the end particles tab, and then down here you have something called create emitter. Now there's actually a couple of them. There's a create emitter under emit, and then there's a create emitter under legacy particles. I want the one under emit. And I'm gonna open up this option box for a second. I've already uh, named it, so I've named it the snow emitter. Um, so I'm just gonna click create. And now we can see we have an emitter. I'm gonna move it above my objects. And then right now I, I'm in my um, custom workspace. I'm gonna change it to the classic workspace so that I have access to the timeline and the range slider. And then um, I'm gonna open up these preferences over here and I have it set to play every frame as well as the max playback speed a uh, one times through because I don't want it to loop. And now I will hit the play button. And you can see now the particles are falling and once it gets to the end, it stops. And we will have to change some settings because I want the particles to not be in the air um, when it, the timeline reaches the end here. And also I want it to collide with this object. So let's um, open up the outliner and the attribute editor and we'll change some of these settings. So on the emitter, you can get to the emitter itself, the particle shape, as well as the nucleus. Now the emitter will control some of the emission properties. Uh, the particle shape will have some properties related to the particle itself, its own collisions, and then the nucleus has some wind and gravity options. Uh, let's start with the emitter. Um, right now, it's the emitter type is Omni. I'm gonna change this to volume. And I want to um, change this volume size to cover it. So sorry, to be big enough so that it covers these objects. So I'm going to go into my scale tool and just scale it in two axes and make sure that it's big enough that it covers these objects. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I want to be careful because I don't want the particles to fall outside of this terrain. Now, um, if you want it to cover the entire terrain, um, what you would do, I'll just explain it right now real fast, is you would cover it this way. Right? So maybe create the and cover the whole terrain. And then you would go to the emitter shape and um, go down to mission attributes. And you would have it die once it exits that volume. But I'm going to just do it this way. And I think that should be pretty good for now. We can change the size later if we need to. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want a bit of friction on both the particle and the object. So let's let, start with the object and I'm gonna go open up its, um, actually, we need to set the collision first. So I'm gonna select the object and go to the effects workflow again. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the end cloth tab and create a passive collider. There we go. And then over here, on the collider, um, what I want to do is give it a bit of friction. So I'm going to drag this friction slider up to one for now. So let's see if this is working. So I'm going to move the timeline to the start. And um, one more thing I want to do actually is on the emitter itself, I'm going to go to the particle shape. It has its own collision. And I'm going to drag that slider up to one as well. Actually, I'll make it probably 1.5. 
and maybe even give it a bit of stickiness, maybe 0.5. There we go. And then um, I think there's one more thing I wanna do over here, but I forget. I'll find out in a second. Let's hit play. Let's see. All right, there's a few more things I wanna do, um, but at least what we can see now, it's falling quite nicely. Um, I wanna give us some more frames. So I'm gonna make the frame count about 1,000. And then I wanna increase the amount of particles. So let's go back to the emitter. And then down here for rates per second, I'm gonna make this something quite high, maybe like 3,000. That'll give us a lot of particle, particles right off the start. And then for the direction, I'm gonna make it a little bit random. So I'm down here for volume speed, for the random direction, I'm gonna make this one. There we go. And now let's uh, try this and see if we have enough particles. So bring the timeline to the start. And there we go, we have a lot of particles falling now. It's moving a little bit in a random speed, so random direction, and uh, it's covering our object quite nicely, and it's also sticking to it. All right, so I'm gonna hit stop. So you can see that we have some particles in the air. Um, I don't want that, but we can, we can tell that we have a, a good amount of particles on the ground. So let's change that other um, option. So to have it so that it stops after a certain amount, we're gonna go back to the particle shape. And then down here, let me just close this up so it doesn't get too confusing. Um, under emission attributes, rather than have the max count be negative one, which means it'll keep going right to the end of the, the frame count, I'm gonna change it to um, maybe 20,000 or let's do 20, 25,000 particles. So we'll stop once it hits uh, 25,000. So now we'll hit play. All right, so the particles have fallen. They're sitting on top of the objects now. And um, you just wanna play with those settings and um, get the amount of particles you'd like for your own scene. But I'm ready to convert this to polygon. So what I'll do is I'll select the particle over here in the outliner, and I'm gonna go up to the modify tab. And then down here we have our conversion options. And what we're looking for is end particles to polygons. Click on that. And you may or may not see something right away, depending on your particle size. Um, I left mine at default, so 0.2. Um, but I'll just change this so you can take a look at the difference, right? So if I increase it, you can see we have a lot of snow covering it now. And if I decrease it, you know, we'll have less. I'm gonna leave it maybe at 0.2 for now. Let's see. Um, you can see that I inputted this number, but it didn't change. Sometimes um, it won't change unless you move the slider. So I'm just going to move it. Um, or what you could do is say I want it to be 0.1. Um, well, actually, it worked that time. But um, another thing you can do is um, for the particles, so let's choose the particle. Um, actually, we're on the object. So what we'll do is we'll go down here, and what we're looking for is the output mesh. So if we go to the output mesh, we can change some of these settings um, to get, get the look we want. So for the threshold, I could decrease that if I want, or I could increase the particle's uh, size. If I leave it at 0.1, I can go and decrease the threshold and I'll get more of um, the snow. So instead of 0.1, maybe I'll do 0.05, hit enter. And now you can see we have a bit more snow. Actually, I like that amount. Um, but you could also play with the blobby scale if you want, and that could um, increase some of these um, blobs. <laughs> there we go. Actually, that was pretty good back there too. Let me just see. And yeah, something like that. that looks pretty nice for me. You can see our sled's nicely covered now, and we have some snow sitting on this fence rail, as well as the um, barrel. <laughs> and then finally, um, what you want to do is, um, with an object like this, um, once you're happy with it, you may want to delete some of the geometry on the bottom. So let me just close this up. Um, also, um, this geometry might be a little bit dirty, so you should probably just clean it up as well. So I'm going to select the mesh, go to the modeling workflow, and I'm going to choose mesh cleanup, open up this option box, and what I recommend is hitting it with a cleanup of, let me just show you, face with more than four sides. I'll select these ones as well, 
and then these ones and just hit clean up just to clean up that mesh and then i'm going to select this mesh and isolate it for a second and what you'll want to do is probably delete some of that geometry on the bottom if you don't need it also you may want to maybe reduce this triangle count so we could select this now that we've cleaned it up i'm just going to delete that history and go to mesh reduce and just reduce it to the amount you want so i've hit it with one reduce it reduced by 50 percent I can drag this slider up a little bit more if I want to maybe something like that. So maybe let's try 75. Yeah, looks pretty good. And now we can take a look at it and it looks pretty nice. So we have some snow covering our object. Sometimes you may have some stray uh, small particles you may want to delete. And then also for the look of it, I think this looks pretty nice on the low poly props. Um, it's a combination of this soft look with the hard edge of the low poly, but you may want to select it and harden those edges as well, right? And make it consistent. It's up to you. I'll leave that up to you to see what kind of uh, look you want for your own scene. But there you go. We have some snow covering our objects now. All right, and there you go. That's how you make some low poly snow in Maya. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful and can use the techniques to make your props a little more seasonal for the holidays. That's it for this one, so we will see you in the next. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.